Okay, so we're live. Um, hi, welcome back. My floor is really squeaky, so I move around a lot too, so sorry for that. To shoot. Because I just move around a lot. You'll see in this video, I move around a lot. I'm just like... But, um, we're going yellow bean status today, because... So, for this video, well, it's almost 2020, and I'm going to be an adult next year. I'm going to graduate. I just, <laughs> and I just want to talk about this year along with like anime, games, and this life experience. Ugh. Okay. Continue. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> I just want to like talk about each one. Say what's my favorite anime of this year. So first on our list, we have It's a great anime. It's a freaking beautiful anime. Oh my god, I need to sit and think about it. So gorgeous animation. Top notch. I mean story is pretty good too. But like, I think my favorite arc so far has been like you try to go back to Shibachi and take it over. It's freaking, it's freaking beautiful, like seeing the Levi and everything. Oh my god. And then like you go like out the wall to the ocean, it's like so emotional. I just sat there and I was like, oh my god. We're getting there! And I'm like, I saw, the, I saw the manga, I know what happened to Sasha, and I'm just not there for it. I am so distraught on a different level, you know what I mean? Because like, I think everyone's distraught because it's Sasha, and then I know if Levi dies, ooh! Because mm. it was really nice, and I do like the second season more. It was like, really interesting because to see like that really crazy character be like, super aggressive and mean and it's like really interesting honestly I don't it's just like kind of like realistic in a way how people are like they're that toxic and I think it's really interesting to have that kind of conflict a toxic character with a red skull and it's like it's just to see the hippo mom getting some development too honestly kind of made me happy I feel like the like gory and um I forgot what the bird's name is but I like the like conflict between those two I'm kind of excited I'm kind of excited to see how it's gonna be like fixed in the story, I hope it'll take it easy way. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. And I don't think so. I hope it's not like that. I like Tadana as a character. Or, like, a character design. Obviously, he's like an adorable character. Oh my god. Like, but character wise, like, traits and stuff. He's, like, pretty interesting, but I feel like his decisions made sense. I think it's a very interesting call. He wasn't, like, a bad character in the sense that like, he was the antagonist. He was just, like, it's fun to see budding heads, but not see, like, trouble in the way. He wasn't a bad character. He was being, I feel like, kind of reasonable because I am also one in that part of, like, I don't believe in marriage and say, like, it brings you happiness if you don't need it. The cute bunny girl versus, like, her actual avatar person. They're both, like, pretty good watching materials, honestly. Um, the, like, scary bad girl and, like, the small kind of lolly girl that she created us. It's, like, Good with those interesting characters overall. They're like really good uh, sniper guys, really cool as well. It's like I wish I focused I focus a lot on like the main character's like story and her like problems, which I gotta get because you're my character. I wish I hope if we have to get uh, I hope if we do get season two, we focus a lot more on the guy and the small little singer girl. I mean, we kind of get a lot of development with the small singer girl, how she just has like problems and like really a hard life, honestly. But I kind of want to know about like the shooter guy as well because. I don't remember the anime to be very vividly, but I just know that the anime is really good. <laughs> and I really love the action sequences. The action sequences were like legit the best in the sense of like, it was just so smooth and clean. It was interesting concepts and how it was all just like done out. It was great and I'm so happy. Ooh. I want to watch the anime again now that I'm talking about this. It's just like, it's so much better in Sword Island. Like, I got past. I was all season one, I think in two days, maybe, maybe a couple weeks or something. I watched only two episodes of Sword Island. I was like, this is not for me. We're gonna go past. We're gonna. I just. I dropped it so hard. And my friend, who was a big Sword Online person, was like, "What?" I was like, "Yeah, I can't get into it. The guy is just too, uh, honestly." So. And that one was honestly really interesting. Like, you may think it's sumo wrestling. How can it be? And it's like, it's not interesting, interesting. It's like, I gave it almost an uh, 8, so it's like a, it's a somewhat great anime. So, it's just like, mmm. 
<laughs> you gotta be really into sports anime to like like it. Um, honestly, <laughs> um, it was really weird for my brother to watch it because you mean they're basically naked. Their second opening, I believe, was a lot, literally about being naked. Like, mm, it's like an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste at me. So I don't blame you if you're just like, what the fuck. But yeah, I actually kind of it kind of end off on a really kind of sad note. Cause it just like, it cut off all its characters and I think it skipped a couple of years which I know doesn't happen in the manga For what it is, I think it's like, there's no season 2 because of the ending I think So, but from what, everything in that, um I don't, like, it's an anime that doesn't stick to me as well It doesn't have like amazing memorable character characters like Haikyuu Like, you can just sit there you can think about like all the amazing things that happened Like there's so many things in Haikyuu that you can like remember You vividly like see and think about you fan of things like Fan girl boy all over, and you just sit there and it's just like, how do you just give me really hype? Even though my hand times I watch it, I act like I've never seen it, and it's like something new. But like, with the Super Wrestling one, there's nothing that sticks. Like, I can remember some like characters and maybe some things, but it's not like a hype anime. Um, if you're okay with like also a lot of naked guys who are more on the thicker side, which I really like this anime for, like, it had a lot more thicker characters, a way different style. It was like, um, older Japan in modern style kind of thing with like longer hair, it's tied back, really nice, like bigger, beefier guys. And I appreciate that a lot more compared to like the pretty high cute boys. <laughs> like no shade high cute whatsoever, but I just love the thicker, chunkier guys in the Samoa Sling anime. That was just so cute, honestly. She didn't be cute. It's not supposed to be cute, but I just find it so adorable. I don't know. I know, it's pretty damn high for a movie. It's just like, it's so good! It's like, it's not amazing, but I still give it 9.5 9 out of 10. It's mostly because it's like, it's just so weird that it's so good. Like, you know, it's like, it's so many weird things that happened. But just, it's just something that I all love. It's like mafia, drugs, sex, a baby. Like, and, like I'm not a big Christmas person, honestly, but there was Christmas. It's like, there's um, homosexual people, there's hopeless people, there's like, it's freaking crazy! I love it! It's, I love the art style too. I love kind of crazy art styles. I like when the guy is doing the poems. I'm sad. I like the story behind each character in a sense of like a homeless person or a, a homeless hobo person. Or, oh, that's a homeless hobo person. That's the same thing. A homeless gay person. There we go. A homeless gay person that wants to be a mom. A girl who has daddy problems and stabbed him too. She's more on a thicker side. She's like cats. And the dad who's just a big liar who's also a drunk. I love the scene so much where he's like, and please comes out and he's like, sir, you need anything? He's like, a trash can, please. And he's like, here you go. He's like, I don't think I can fit. Like, <laughs> this scene, the entire show ever. I love it so much. I love the plot twist. I think it's why it's like 0.5, it's like 0.5 off. Because the plot twist was just getting really, really wild. It's just like kind of weird. Kind of seemed like it didn't connect. It kind of did in a way. I just liked how it was all based on like wrong time, but also right time kind of deal. I just like like that. I just like how it's like it all leads up to this moment. And you're just like, I see what you did there. I like it. You know what I'm saying? Is this? Please go watch Tokyo Godfathers. It's not too late for a Christmas movie. It's the perfect time for a Christmas movie. So please. Go watch Tokyo Golf, it's on a different level and I love it. And the first uh, Satoshi uh, Khan movie I've ever watched. I do have, um, what's it called? I do have Perfect Blue and Paprika. I just haven't watched them yet because I want to watch them with like my family. And like, probably I might watch them uh, later this week because I still have a break. The animation is great, but like sort of, not sort of, like... <laughs> Uh, no King No Life is like that animation in that world and art style of it is gorgeous on a different level. Oh my god. I'm so happy it's about like the past and how it came, what like the gaming world came to be. Like I appreciate that movie on a different level. So nice. Um I think it's what the thing it knocked points off was 
the story. I like the story and like how it went from point A to point B on how the characters met and how the characters fell out of it and it leads to, it connects to and it also shows the main characters of this um, series right now. I think the only why besides plot that I kind of knocked it off because the soundtrack I think maybe characters wise pretty good honestly kind of interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I think I knocked points off for uh, soundtrack. I don't really recall any amazing soundtracks. But yeah, so, uh, if you haven't seen No Game No Life, please check out No Game No Life. Please check out um, uh, No Game No Life the movie. I feel like it was pretty hyped. I think it's worth the hype. Um, so if you're really into Sword Art, it's not Sword Art Online. If you're into No Game No Life, uh, you should definitely check out the movie because it's pretty legit. It's like, it's like really popular. It was popular back then. I don't know how old that series is. Oh my god, Red Line. <laughs> I've always wanted to watch Red Line so bad. Maybe because I heard the art style was really cool and I also watched a short clip of like Save Animators. Kind of the same concept as like Race Car Drivers. It's like, it was so cool. It's just, I just, I'm not, I was, I always wanted to be a race car driver when I was younger I think. Because you're just you're so fast, you're like so dangerous and it's so bloody and dead. <laughs> but I love the um, concept of Red Line where it's like, an intergalactic race in space, like freaking, oh my god. The characters are pretty good, but the soundtrack, pretty legit on a different kind of level. Red, uh, Red Line is like EDM, I think, EDM kind of. It's like, it's freaking hype, an ending song towards the end. So good, I love that song. If I'm ever having like, a kind of sad day or a slowish day, I love that song and it gets me like, my head's falling off. <laughs> it gets me like in such a good, mellow feeling mood. And ending to that movie is legit. One of the greatest feelings I think I could ever like feel. I like the theory behind it where like they actually died, which makes sense because if you're gonna have that speed and you're just normal humans, you would die. So I'm kind of happy in that sense. Hat, don't fall off. Don't fall off. Don't betray me. Don't betray the LBs. But um, just and like, I like the idea that they actually died and they're floating their way to heaven. I'm happy like the cast of them like they died in their happiness moment. And it's just interesting on a set. It's a good soundtrack. Amazing anime. It's a project that has not got enough recognition. I am so mad about it because it's so. Beautiful. I can't even remember what that clip was. It's kind of the same thing. And the galactic kind of race stuff, but it's like different characters. So good. Or same company that makes IQ. So I'm just like, I have to one. I'm not like, like how interesting can running possibly be? But with uh, Run With The Wind, it's like, I like how they take a concept of like people who do not run at all and they are like growing. I like it's so more character based, but it does it in a really good way. It's just, it's, the characters are just so interesting, and it's like, really fun to see them connect. I just love the mix of characters, and they're like, they're also struggle to go through college, it's, like, it's about college life, not freaking high schoolers, that's why there's a diversity. It's kind of a good representation of like, how college could possibly be. I also see the conflict of people like, getting into like, jobs, and studying, and working on their um, majors. I think that's like how it's different from, that's how it's different from the sumo wrestling one, because it's just all high schooler boys trying to work on sumo wrestling. Nothing else is really happening. But with Run With Wind, they're all busy trying to get their outside loves, like outside loves, outside loves. <laughs> they're getting their outside um, life together. With the guy in the job, the guy trying to stop smoking. Uh, one of the guys has a really bad uh, problem with his parents or whatever. Uh, the guy is really into manga kind of thing. Uh, he doesn't want to exercise and he's really weak. He's trying to like have like a mental, he's like mentally distraught um, among himself. Uh, the guy who has a really bad history with track, not bad history with track, he just like has a bad experience with track because he's in school. It's just, like, it's so, it builds his character so well. And like, the story is not amazing. It's interesting. I like a team that loses but also keeps going. It's like that also because it's like they're not the best team and they know that because they're like they don't all run, they don't never most of them have never like really ran or anything, when he does their sports, they're not really good at running. It's just it's a good mash of characters and it's a really feel good anime and I appreciate it so much on a different different level, you know? Oh, I'm taking the wind out of me. <laughs> no, it's just the characters and stuff. Um but soundtrack for Run of the Wind. It's pretty good. Like, at least for the opening ending. Both opening and both endings have been pretty good. Like, at least the ending for both halves are really good. The opening for the first half is pretty good. I don't remember what the second one sounds like. I think it was pretty good as well. I think because um, the animation is very similar to Haikyuu. That's when I was like, more really interested in it. Because I was like, oh, it kind of looks like Haikyuu. So I'm like, really into it. And like, Haikyuu's doing a different art style. So it's kind of nice. 
Um, I appreciate that accent. So animation wise, it's pretty nice. Not amazing though. It's not like Haikyuu amazing, I feel like, if I recall correctly. But soundtrack, I think it's way better than Haikyuu. Like for opening and any kind of thing, Haikyuu's ending has never really stuck with me, honestly. But like the soundtrack of all these among the series is like really good. Um, I don't recall really well with Front of the Wind, but yeah. Entertainment wise, pretty high up there. If you can see how excited I was, to freaking, I was jumping up walls. So if you can't tell how excited and how entertainment I got from it, certainly. If you're not really into like story, if you want more action, obviously you're not gonna get it with a running anime, sports anime at least. And it's just like Haikyuu, then maybe Koro in the basket. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Like it's more kind of slice of life. It's more episodic in a way, um, and kind of like an arc. Not episodic. It has arcs to it. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you took um, My Hero Academia, kinda, kind of minus the powers, kinda, and put them in prison. Like like if you had villains, and you put them like the villains of My Hero Academia, they're really cool villains, go into a prison and they're kind of like in a high tight. A really tight person. It's kind of like that, that's how I think of it, but it's like way more colorful, way more sparkles and coolness and Nimbaka's pretty legit in like the sense of like animation. So nice, really cool, really diverse character design. Soundtrack, pretty legit. I really love the opening and ending of it. Sounds very similar honestly, but it's just like so nice. It's just, like I think there was a lot of lost points. It's because of the story, how it's just like really weird. It took weird arcs. Some of them are fun. It's more of a fun anime. It's not really hardcore. I feel like it's trying to get hardcore towards the end. But it, the only thing that happened with it is that it built a love character story, which I really appreciate. But it's just like, if you're looking for a serious anime, then a serious fighting anime, this is not really for you. If you just want something really fun, really cool to watch, and it's really cool characters in a prison setting, this is more for you. It's not like, it's not like a, um, what's it called? A Sanin, I think, where it's like, it has dark themes. It kind of, like, not really dark theme. It, it talks about like human experimenting and stuff, but it's not like, it gets really kind of weird and dark towards the end with one of the characters, Nika, but like, it's more fun, honestly. So yeah, that's how Nimbug is an interesting taste. Next, we have another, um, I don't know what their studio is called, it makes that cute and run with the wind, but we have the other one that has very similar style as well. Welcome to the ballroom. Okay, we'll pause on that. Because Welcome to the Ballroom is great on a different, different level. Like, mm. so I gave Welcome to the Ballroom an 8 out of 2, or 8.2 out of 10, that makes more sense. So, um, the reason why it's so high is because of the art style, of course, it is freaking gorgeous. And soundtrack was pretty good. There was, it's one of those other, only, it's like, it's an anime that I will be watch again, and it doesn't have Amazon Prime anymore until I do that. But it is an anime I do want to watch again, and I do want to do that because of the soundtrack. It's one of the only animes out there, besides like some couple other ones, that I remember the soundtrack so vividly, and I have. I went out to look for certain soundtracks. Another anime that I do that with is like Attack on Titan, I think Soul Eater I did that. Like, that soundtrack, the OST for that anime, it's so legit, so good, I'm so proud, and I'm so also mad that they don't have that one of those. They don't have, they have had an official release of the OST where it's playing when uh, Tatara and uh, Chinatsu is like the first dance together. He's like, she knows how to dance. Oh fuck! Like I love that song I played during that moment because this is so beautiful on a different level. Here, let me play it for you because it's so good. Hold on, hold on. or flag, or copyright strike, I don't care, because there's a freaking green sound girl, and I demand we get the official name of that and go freaking download it, get a CD of it, play it for 10 hours, because it is so good! It's just, it's one of those soundtracks, like uh, the one in Redline, where I'm just like, I listen to it, whenever I don't know what to listen to, and it sounds so freaking good and nice, and it's like so calming. <laughs> I love it, love it so hard. But the thing that was like kind of knocking points off was the plot. I wish we had more of a moment where we like saw them in between. It's like more competition than actual practice. Like, I don't hate the idea of it. It was just kind of like weird how they got from point A to point B. Like he was beginning dancing. He like, we started a connoisseur where it's like episode one was him dancing and then the same episode was him exactly where he was 
still dancing. But then it cut from like that to like, no, you can still like dance and do all these moves. Like, what? I thought there could have been some development that happened in between practices, or like have more like montages maybe of him like practicing so mean like know what happened and maybe like learn what the characters is what happens. Because like I didn't know what a fox trial was. I didn't know there were like five different styles of dancing until the very end of it. So I feel like kind of like not points off the plot. It could have been more cohesive and like connected. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's welcome to the ballroom. I'm gonna rewatch it whenever it ends on time again, or I'm gonna find. I really want the DVD version of that anime, cause it's so freaking nice. I don't have that many, like, yeah. The only DVD series I have that's anime is Soul Eater. I really, really want the ballroom on DVD format. So I can watch it whenever I want. I'm so mad that no one talked about the Dororo yet. Play had more Dororos than I'm supposed to, but I love the Dororo. I'm like, So cool, I hate it that people are not like it's like so underrated. I feel like I feel like it came off really strong, it was pretty hype, but then it was just like one of those animes, it's like it got swept under the rug. I was like, okay, you're done. It made me so sad. Like I haven't seen any recaps yet that had the on the list. Like I give it 7.6, mainly because of the soundtrack. I only like the ending and the opening. It's all happy number really. For sure there's more good stuff, but it's like it doesn't stick with me. Other than that, characters are pretty good. I'm like the only Plot, animation, and enjoyment really high up there. It was number eight. It was super solid with that. Plot wise, pretty good, pretty cohesive. Characters, kind of weird, but really good. It's really strong. Um, animation, weird. I love the concept of like the guys who had to go find his body, find certain parts. I love the samurai aspect. I'm really the samurai right now. I think I watched it because I was doing my project actually. I'm not really sure. But I love the idea of like the Ronin. But this guy, he was not just a guy that was like a samurai kind of thing. He was like a freaking demon. He had freaking swords for arms. He could. His body stuff was so cool, it's like, it was also like an emotional turmoil thing, where like, as you're like, he's, as he's laying his emotions, you're like emotional with him. It was like, I love it all on like a different level, like it's not the same level as like, welcome to the ballroom or anything, but it's just like, Dororo needs more appreciation. I feel like that the Dororo, the whole samurai thing, was a swept under the rug because of Demon Slayer. I'm not hearing of Demon Slayer, I have not even watched anything of Demon Slayer yet. Like it's really cool though, really, animation's really cool, but like I feel like Dororo lost its place. It makes me so sad. Also another thing though, is that I'm so sad about the ending. Like how Dororo goes off to learn about being a human. Also his brother and mom die. One was her dad was dead. His dad didn't die at all. Like what? What? Like he got mercy. I was like, but with mom. And then also the Dororo and Hikimaru was like, we're gonna be forever. We're gonna do everything together. We're gonna freaking solve again. We're gonna. But then the dude is happy. Like Dodo, not Dodo. <laughs> you might really laugh without Dodo. I was just like, what? All of that time, you're like, let's be together. We get in trouble together. I find it so weird that he didn't say goodbye to her at least. Like, <laughs> this boy. I swear. Like that's like my only really strong critique. I was at least hoping that they will like make up, but he kind of technically didn't make up. It was just like. Son, I'm sorry. I'll give you all my love now. And then dad, I'm just like, and then the dad, the dad figure died. I was just like, that was also the moment when like he Maru calls his dad really like, mom, and he's and he's like that. Oh my god, it's so cute, so wholesome in a different sense, and the story behind it, and like the idea, of, like the and Dororo story is super nice as well. But yeah, that's it for all the anime I have finished.